Most people think that time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction. But actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of... You know, I'm not even gonna finish that reference. Suffice it to say that when you have a story that deals with the altering of time, whether it be simple DeLorean time travel, to world line jumping, to various Groundhog Day, everybody dies so now I have to go back in time and fix it scenarios, it quickly becomes apparent that you have to really focus on what it is you're watching. Because even the most tiny, insignificant thing could turn into the biggest oh snap moment by the end of it. Today's series once again leads us into the foray that is time manipulation, but unlike others, has a heavy focus on future prediction. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcata, and welcome to Glass Reflection Today, The Future Diary. Let's jam. The beginning story of Future Diary reminds me a lot of the story for Dead Man Wonderland, and you have to admit that there are some similarities to be had there. You have a young middle school aged boy named Yuki, kinda shy, kinda lonerish, who suddenly out of nowhere gets thrown into a world where everyone wants to kill him, and he uses a newfound superpower to stay alive. In this case, that superpower is the Future Diary. Now, he also has a zany, mostly insane female sidekick who is, quote, crazy good at killing people, unquote, though for some unexplained until later in the story reason, is infatuated with our whiny, weak protagonist. Now, the main difference between Future Diary and Dead Man, however, is that Yuki isn't forced into this situation by a panel of crazy, stupid lawyers, but rather the god of the universe in all causality, Deuce Ex Machina, a name he totally does not freaking live up to. <clears throat> Where was I? Ah, yes, so. Yuki, along with 11 others, are given magical cell phones with future diary powers. Those powers being the ability to see into the future. But all of these diaries have limitations depending on the personality of the person who owns them. So the diary users fight to the death with their powers for the chance of becoming gods themselves. This is because the current god, Deuce, is apparently dying and needs a successor. Despite, you know, being a god. And you know, making sure that the future god of the universe is a psychopathic, kill-crazy human being is probably the smartest idea he could have ever have come up with. And I say that with monumentous amounts of sarcasm. All the characters in Future Diary have one thing in common, and that is that they are all emotionally broken in some respect or another. Some are more broken than others, of course, like Yuno, for example, because she loves Yuki. And I mean it when I say that. She loves him. Like to a scary degree. This is a chick who has no problem with offing your mom if she finds out that your mom doesn't really approve of your relationship. But as out of left field as you know is, she's not the only one. It's the mix of crazy out of their head psychopaths that make the story of the show interesting because a lot of the plot runs on a diary user of the week type thing. Kill one, and next week another will be at your doorstep. And a lot of the story of the show is told through the brokenness of each diary user's personality. And the character development for each of them, especially considering the lack of screen time for most of them, is quite laudable. They all have their own motivations and reasons for wanting to become God, though usually it's because they all just want to try and fix their horribly broken pasts. So over the course of the show, you will inevitably run across a diary user who is so horribly broken that you feel sorry for them and wish that things were better for them until of course, you know, chops their head off with an ax because you know, she just has to please her man. And you then quickly forget about your pity as the story keeps moving forward because this pain train's got no brakes. The problem with the show on the whole, however, is as it moves along, it keeps trying to one up itself with bigger and bigger oh snap moments all the way up until the biggest plot twist of them all near the end. Thing is, the more that you try to one-up yourself, the more you push your plot and your characters to the extremes of reality in an attempt to be cool. Like, at the start of the show, all the characters are played, well, fairly realistically, all things considered. But near the end, characters start being able to do things simply for the fact of those things being awesome, and it turns into more of a hindrance than a boon. By the end of it, this leaves Future Diary with plot holes big enough to sink the show into which some may argue it did. Personally, I am of the belief that even if you have a show like this that spontaneously combusts into a big ball of flame, it doesn't mean that it's not going to be fun to watch. Because it, because it is. Seriously.
If someone told you that Future Diary is not a gore fest, they lied to you. Granted, it's not as bad as some shows like, say, Higurashi, but when it can put needless violence on display, it does so. And in that regard, the animation holds up, well, rather well. Beyond that, though, I won't say that the animation is bad per se, because it isn't, but as I sit here, I really can't point to any part of the show and say that the animation of that particular part was outstanding. There's nothing that screams, this looks amazing balls. For the time, it's rather average, like not in a bad average way, but more so in a disappointing way. This is of course all forgiven with the existence of the show's first opening. Now I talked about this opening in my top anime openings video, shameless plug, but it really is something completely fantastic. It has fast, exciting music with wonderfully animated aesthetics, which makes for a kick-ass opening. And really, it totally is. As usual though, with, well, most great openings, it gets replaced at the halfway point. Also as usual, while the replacement is not bad by any stretch of the imagination, it's just not as good as the original, but that's, you know, how these things go. As far as the dub goes, the greater anime community, and by that I mean people who watched this show when it was airing in Japan, will tell you that the dub is utter shit, and that if you wanted to enjoy this show the way it was meant to be enjoyed, that the only way to do that is to watch it subbed. Now, I will admit that this dub has its problems, and one could argue that every dub has problems, but personally, I didn't find anything too, too wrong with it. The main problem I had with it, and believe me when I say that I use the word problem lightly, was that of the casting of Yuno. To be fair, I don't think any English voice actress could have done Yuno better than Barina Palencia. But Yuno's character is, shall we say, very is special. And I don't think it was nailed quite as well as it was in the Japanese dub. Beyond that though, I really have no objections. Like, yeah, I could go and complain about the script itself and all the changes that were made to adapt it for a more Western audience, but you know, when I watched the show, those things didn't really bug me. And overall, it didn't affect my enjoyment of the show, so when you are deciding to watch whether you want to do it subbed or dubbed is completely up to you. There are a lot of shows that exist out there where I will tell you that the best way to enjoy them is to turn your brain off while you watch them. Future Diary sort of falls into this category because while you do need to pay attention enough to understand the gravity of the plot twists that happen when they do happen, if you pay attention too much, you'll just end up extremely frustrated by the monumentous plot holes that exist. It has a great premise, a good start, but by the end of it, it devolves into a massive train wreck. And on the whole, it's not entirely original either. Notice my earlier references to the plot line of Dead Man Wonderland. Most aspects of this show that would draw in the traditional viewer have been done elsewhere and better. But the biggest reason that I would tell anyone to watch this show is because of Yuno. Yes, she's a crazy psychotic, and for lack of a better word, bitch, but that's what makes her entertaining. Beyond that though, if the plot didn't fall into one of its large, massively gaping plot holes, it could have been a lot better, a lot better. Still, as it stands, I enjoyed watching it, which when you get right down to it, is really all that matters. So with all that in mind, I have meticulously calculated values for the categories of story, characters, animation, sound, and my own personal enjoyment, which after something something time travel, la di da di da, has me awarding Future Diary with an overall score of 6.84 out of 10. Why? Because the ending was a piece of <laughs> After something something time travel, la di da di da, has me awarding Future Diary with an overall score of 7.24 out of 10 and a recommendation to stream it rather than buy. This is mainly because if you were to buy it, you would not in fact be getting the show's quote unquote proper ending as the story gets resolved in the OVA Future Diary Redial, which unfortunately is not licensed and probably will never be at this point. What this leaves you with is just the ending of the main show itself. And I'll be honest, that ending is kind of shit from a satisfying perspective. Still though, I guess it's kind of okay to go and buy it because, you know, even though the ending on the DVD is a steaming pile of crap, it's the journey that's important, right?
well, that's what I'll keep telling myself anyways. At the time of this video, Future Diary, of course, not including the aforementioned OVA episode, has been licensed by Funimation and is available on DVD, not Blu-ray, unfortunately, which kind of sucks, but you know, get what you can. Also, as usual, on Funimation's website, you can watch the entire show subtitled and the first four episodes dubbed for free with the rest of the dub being available if you happen to be a member of Funimation's subscription service. Availability of all this is dependent on your country of origin as per usual. For alternate anime recommendations, I point you towards two other shows from the very same year. First off, Steins Gate, which itself contains a time-altering plot. And secondly, Madoka Magica, because of <coughs> reasons. And also because you should watch it regardless of whatever reasoning I could possibly list here right now. Between these shows, you should hopefully find something to your liking. And that's it from me. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter if you feel so inclined. And until next time, ladies, gentlemen, and others, stay frosty.